hear me, please type something into the chat, or if you're having other tech issues, I'm going to type that real quick in here. Okay, so welcome everyone to the first OVW annual report webinar for VAWA Victim Services. This is the first time that I have done this. I'm not sure if CJCC has provided a similar webinar before, but either way, I just say that to let you all know that um, it may be a little bit rocky because it's the first time, <laughs> but I have done the VAWA CGSI and the SAS report uh, webinar, so hopefully this one will be the smoothest. I am recording this webinar, and it should be posted on our website no later than tomorrow, close of business. So um, I'll show you where that would be on our website as we conclude with some helpful resources. So today we're going to go over the purposes of reporting, the deadline, the communications process between CJCC and subgrantees, how to complete more than one report if applicable to you, and I'm going to actually walk you through the report step by step and give you an opportunity to answer specific questions. Then I'll cover some of the common errors so that you can avoid them, touch base on some helpful resources as I mentioned previously, and then we'll have time at the end for Q&A, but feel free to ask a question throughout the webinar by typing into the chat box. So first, let's take a quick poll, and you can answer the question by typing something into chat or raising your hand on the webinar tool. So first, just let me know, have you done an annual report before? Okay, so far I've got two yeses. Okay, so it seems like most of you are old hands, you're pros at this. So that's good to know. You'll probably have pro questions. And then also, does your agency have more than one VAWA or SAS grant from CJCC? So in other words, does your agency have a VAWA and a SAS grant, or does it have more than one VAWA grant? Okay, we have one yes, and I believe that you were on the CGSI webinar last week, weren't you? No? Okay. Well, when I show you where the, this webinar will be posted online, I'll show you where you can access the CGSI webinar, and if you have any follow-up questions, then just let me know. Okay, so it seems like that was the only agency that had more than one VAL or SAS grant, so I'll touch base on some of those issues, but for the most part we'll stick to the um, idea that you just have one VAL or SAS grant, well one VAL grant since you're on this webinar. And this might be a good time to mention I'm only going to cover VAL victim services, so if you have a question about SAS or about VAL CGSI, then um, again I'll show you where those webinars will be posted. So first, let's cover the purposes of reporting. I know you're all really busy doing very important work, so why does CJCC make you do this report when we already make you do the VSSR and the OPM and budget adjustment request and subgrant expenditure request? Why this on top of all that? Well, the simple answer is that the Federal Office on Violence Against Women requires it. So as the stewards of grant funds, we have to ensure that we are monitoring the use of those funds for the statutorily authorized program activities. So the first one is monitoring. That's our little girl over here with the magnifying glass. The second reason is accountability. We have to be accountable to the federal funders and to the public for the use of these funds. And then the third, we have our little fat cat here, is to make the case for continued and increased funding. Your programs are really important and we want to continue to support them financially. And one of the best ways to show how important they are 
is to complete a report outlining the use of those funds. On this slide, we have our deadlines. There's really just one deadline for the annual report. It needs to be submitted to CJCC no later than February 15th of each year, and the report should cover the entire grant year that was closed out on December 31st. So y'all are lucky in that VAWA aligns with the calendar year, so it should be pretty, pretty easy to remember. You're going to report on all your VAWA-funded activities from January 1st through December 31st on this report. Now, CJCC submits the report on March 30th each year to the Muskie School of Public Service at the University of Southern Maine. They're contracted with the Office on Violence Against Women to collect and analyze all this data. Since we give you 45 days from the end of the reporting uh, period to complete the report, we've also given ourselves 45 days to review each of these reports, which in our state there's a little over 60 right now for both VAWA and SAS, and make sure the data is accurate before we submit your report and complete our administrative report. Please don't confuse this deadline with the OPM, CGSSR, or VSSR deadline. This is a separate report. Here's some tips for deadline compliance to make sure that you don't miss it. First, refer to your special conditions of your grant award. Second, if you're not listed as the project director on your grant, make sure that you have open lines of communication with that person and that they can forward it to you so that you can complete the report on time and have all the tools you need, such as the forms and instructions, to complete it accurately. Please note that per the special conditions, CJCC will not process SERs until your annual report has been submitted. Another incentive not to be late. And then finally, repeated lateness or failure to complete any of the reports required by CJCC may result in penalties such as reductions to your award. And you don't want that. Here's some information on the communication process between CJCC and subgrantees. The planner, that's me, will send out instructions on completing the report at least 30 days before the report is due. In this case, I try to send it out the first week of January so that you have well over 30 days, ideally 45. That information is only going to go to the project director listed on your grant. You need to ask them to forward it to you if you report but are not the project director. Here's also a good time to mention that you might want to create your own calendar reminders each year, just in case you don't receive it from the project director, so you can ask them, hey, did you receive this email? Or if you are the project director and you didn't receive it for some reason, you can follow up directly with me or somebody else at CJCC. Please note that to complete the report, there's no user ID and password. You simply download the form from the email or from CJCC's website or from Muskie's website, and I'll show you all that later and then complete the PDF. And you can save it and close it out as you go. You don't have to complete it in all one fell swoop. Next, you're going to upload the report to CJCC's Adobe form in order to submit it to us. And I'll show you that later as well. You don't log in or log out to that, and you do have to complete it in one sitting. But it's a very short form, and it really shouldn't be that big of a deal. Please make sure you can access MailChimp via your email system because this is how you would receive the information that I send out, such as the reminders, the reporting form and instructions, and any tips and tricks on how to complete the report. And also, contact me with questions. I prefer email, um, and please include your grant number for expedited service so that I can look at your, your grant specifically in our database and make sure that I'm providing tailored service according to your agency and its program. But, of course, you can always feel free to call me, too. I know that there are some things that's better to just talk it out and discuss it, so don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call. Also, unfortunately, I'm the only person at the agency who can answer questions about this report. So while you can contact other staff members, um, I'm really the only one who's trained to do this. So be patient. I'll help you out. Just call or email me, and I'll get to your question as soon as I possibly can. When do you complete more than one report? We'll just gloss over this information really quickly since this only applies to one agency. But you would only complete a different reporting form if you have different funding streams. 
such as a VAWA and a staff award. So for example, if your agency has two VAWA grants, all the VAWA data can be entered on one annual report regardless of the program type or the grant year. What do you report on this form? The first section is basic agency information, such as your agency's name, subgrant number, and so on. The next is your staff information. For VAWA only, you're going to report the percentage of victimization types that are addressed by the grant-funded project by domestic and dating violence, sexual assault, and stalking categories. You're also going to complete the program purpose areas specific to the use of your VAWA grant funds. And then for VAWA only, if applicable, you'll complete the section on coordinated community response activities. In the victim services section, you're going to enter data on your output, which in other words, is all your VAWA funded project activities during the reporting period. Oops, I need to correct that, it says quarter. So this may mean that you need to prorate your data to reflect only the use of those VAWA funds. We're going to go over that next. And then lastly, you'll complete some narrative questions. As I said, we'll go over the report together in um, sub subsequent slides, so just hang on through proration before we get there. Prorating data is one of the most common problems that I encounter on any type of report that we require, except for the OPMs, because we don't require proration. Um, but let's go through this first example just to help us get our get ourselves in the mood to how we're going to prorate our agency's data. So, in example number one, Susie Advocate is funded through your agency's VOCA grant at 80% of her time and through a VAWA grant for 20% of her time. Susie serves 40 victims during this quarter. You should therefore report the following. 40 times 0.2, which is the proportion of time Susie is on the VAWA grant, equals 8 victims served with VAWA funds. Do not report the VOCA funded victims served. In the next example, Susie is funded through your agency staff grant at 50% and Noreen is funded through your VAWA grant at 75%. Susie served 50 victims and Noreen treated 30. You should therefore report the following. 50 times 0.5, which is the proportion of Susie's time paid for staff funds, would be 25 victims served with staff funds, which you would complete on your staff's report, not on the VAWA one. 30 times 0.75, which is the proportion of Noreen's time is paid for with VAWA funds, equals 22.5. You would round that up to 23 and report 23 victims served with VAWA funds on the VAWA report. On this next slide, we're going to prorate the data based on the agency's budget as a whole as opposed to staff time. So this example has staff in it, not VAWA, but just substitute VAWA for it in your head. So let's say you have a VAWA grant that makes up 5% of your agency's total budget. And in the first quarter of your VAWA grant, your agency served 25 sexual assault victims. You would therefore report 0 .05 times 25 equals two sexual assault victims. And you would round that up from 1.25. Anytime you encounter a number with a decibel when you're prorating, just go ahead and round it up one. Accurate reporting on the use of funds is really important. It's the number one issue that we encounter when we're reviewing the report. And even still, despite our diligence, it's the number one issue that we get back when Muskie sends us our what's called a red flag report where we then have to submit it to the grantees for correction. So no matter how you do it, your data must only reflect VAWA or staff funded activities. You must prorate. I'm going to pause here to see if anybody has any questions before we go over the form. Okay, looks like everybody's good so far, so let's go down the rabbit hole. I went ahead and included the hyperlink for the stop form right in here, but I happen to have it pulled up already. So let's take a dive. Okay, so everybody should be able to see the um, PDF form on their screen. Make it a little bit bigger here. 
Can you just raise your hand if you don't see the PDF form on your screen? Okay, great. Looks like everybody's on the same page. So I pulled this up directly from the Muskie School's website, which is the same link that I included in the reminder emails. You can also get one at CJCC's website, which I'll show you later. Um, this report will remain the same every year until next year, actually. Um, so we're using an old report in a sense, but um, because of the 2013 Bauer reauthorization, they'll probably be revising and releasing a new reporting form for the use of the funds that you're extending starting January 1st of this year. So just a little background info on this form. We're probably going to see some changes next year. This main page has some brief instructions, but if you ever need any more detailed instructions, click this little blue question mark box. This provides additional information on how to complete each of the questions. So when you all have specific questions as we go through the form, you'll probably see me clicking on this box to try to help you figure out the right response. I hope that's a helpful tip and trick. A lot of people just kind of, I guess they missed that or don't think they can click on it, don't understand what it's for, but um, it's there for you. Under section number one, you're going to enter the date of the report. And you can enter 2-15-15, the date submitted to CJCC, or you can go ahead and do 3-30-15 for the date that it's due to OVW. The current reporting period, though, should be for 2015, because you're reporting, or uh, 2014 because you're reporting on the use of funds from January 1st through December 31st of 2014. On question number three, you're going to answer, you're going to enter your agency's name. And then under question number four, you're going to enter the subgrant numbers for all of your VAWA grants here. So um, raise your hand or type something in the chat. Did anyone happen to get an extension on your funds used in 2013? So in other words, did you have more than one VAWA grant number active during the 2014 calendar year? Okay, so it looks like that didn't apply to anyone, but I just asked because for any grant number that you had active during the reporting period, you would enter that grant number here in Section 4. Next, under number five, you're going to select the box that most accurately describes your type of funded organization. You really should be answering based on the boxes provided. Avoid putting something into other. For number 5A, you'll select whether you're a faith-based organization, and for 5B, whether you're a culturally specific community-based organization. If you're not sure what either of those things really mean, you can select the question mark box. Uh, Faith-based doesn't seem to have a lot of helpful <laughs> information as far as how they define that. Um, so you can just ask me and I'll route you to the right, uh, right template. And then the culturally specific community-based organization does have more helpful information to help you define it. Going down to number six, you're going to enter the point of contact for the person responsible for day-to-day -day coordination of the subgrant. This is the person who I or Muskie will contact if we have any questions about the report. And then under number seven, I think everybody should really select no unless you've served any, um, well, no, because then you're not, your program is not specifically addressing tribal populations. So this doesn't apply to anybody in Georgia currently. For number eight, you're going to indicate the percentage of stop grant subgrant funds that were directed to each of these victimization types by sexual assault, VV, or stalking. The total must equal 100%. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, we're going to get a little interactive here. I found that this section is a little bit tricky for some people. And hey, it's even a little bit tricky for me. It usually takes me a minute to do these calculations and make sure that they're accurate. So this section is asking for the type of staff that you have funded through your VAWA subgrant. 
but they want you to enter a number that reflects the amount of time relative to the overall hours worked of the staff people funded by your VAWA subgrant. So why don't you all go ahead and type an example into your box. If you have staff on your VAWA subgrant, tell me how much time they work on VAWA-related activities. You can express that either as a percentage or hours per week. Okay, I'm still waiting to get some responses in. Okay, so we have somebody here who has a um, support staff person, an administrative assistant, who's on the grant at five hours a week, but they're only in the office 20 hours a week. So that person is already working 0.5 time for their total hours. And if you divide that by the hours they work per week, which is a quarter of their time, I'm going to grab my calculator and do some calculations here. Then you come up with 0.125. Okay, have another example in here. So we have two at 100% and one at 20%. So that should be pretty straightforward. Um, in this field for FTE, you would just type in one for let's say, victim advocate, and then one for a legal advocate. And then for 20%, you would just type in 0.2 for, let's just say, it's a proportion of another victim advocate's time. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this, or have you had problems with it before? Okay, well, you all must be pros. Go ahead and move to the next section, purpose areas. So just like staff time, this is one that seems to trip people up a lot. The guiding principle to remember when you're completing this report is to follow your budget. How did you use your funds this year? So for each purpose area that applies, you're going to select it based on the use of your VALA fund. The most common ones that we should see for um, victim service ballot providers would be this one, victim service programs. Assisting victims of sexual assault and domestic violence and immigration matters, and or maintaining core victim services while supporting complementary new initiatives and emergency services. So those are just some examples. It really depends on how your program funds are used. If you have any questions about this, then please contact me because, again, it's another one of the most common errors that we see. Don't select the boxes based on the work of your agency as a whole. Under C1, if you use program funds for training during the current reporting period, then this must mean you have another grant aside from a VAWA Victim Services grant. So you're probably going to say no. 
where it might apply to you, but I'm not going to cover it because that was covered in the CGSI webinar. However, all subgrantees, regardless of use of funds, should fill out the coordinated community response subsection. So over here, um, you will enter in this column the frequency by which you provide victim you receive victim you provide or receive victim survivor referrals, consultations, or technical assistance for each of these agency types. If your stop ballot funded program staff participated in a task force or work group, then you would indicate that under meeting. But this middle column here you can fill out regardless of use of funds. Does anybody have any questions about this? Okay, we'll go ahead and move forward. In Section 16, you can enter any additional information that you want to provide about the effectiveness of CCR activities or anything that you want to share beyond what you indicated in the data above. Um, I always tell subgrantees this is a great time for you to brag. It's also a good time for you to enter any, any challenges that you've encountered in dealing with your multidisciplinary. For Section C3, if you use stop funds to develop, substantially revise, or implement policies or protocols during the grant year, you're going to enter yes and fill out the corresponding section under each of these six section headers. Does this apply to anyone on the webinar? You can go ahead and raise your hand or type something in the chat. Looks like it doesn't apply to anybody. You almost have a really straightforward victim services program. And over here in number 18, you have the space to enter any optional additional information about your program. Under section C4, if you use stop funds to develop, substantially revise, or distribute projects during the grant year, you'll click yes and then fill out this section. So this may mean not only that you use stop funds to, to print or to put the materials online, but also that you use staff time to develop, revise, or distribute them. And if you run out of space under any of these sections for number 19, you can go ahead and skip to yeah, question 63 down here. And you can enter any additional information about the data submitted. And that doesn't just go for section 19. You can use this for any of the data sections you complete. All right, let's get back up here to products. Does anybody have any products that you use stop funds to distribute? Or have any questions about that section? Okay, we'll move right along. Under data collection and communication systems, this is a familiar refrain, you're going to indicate uh, how you used your stop program funds to develop, install, or expand data collection or communication systems during the grant year. So if it applied, you select yes, and then you will check each box as appropriate. Did anybody use your stop funds for this purpose? Okay. Next, you shouldn't be filling out um, specialized units, really, um, for the most part of victim service agency. I haven't encountered one that's done this section yet. But you would check yes if any stop program funded staff were part of a specialized unit in any of the categories they list on this page. 
or were you, or if funds were used to directly support a specialized unit. But you would probably have a criminal justice system project if you did that. Not a victim services project. And then under C7, if you use stop funds for system improvement, such as evaluation, interpreters, language lines, safety audits, and so on, then you would complete this section. Anybody have any questions before we move on to the victim services section? Okay, let's move on to victim services. So this section should apply to everyone. You should select yes. And under question number 25, you're going to indicate the number of primary victims or survivors served, the number of partially served victims or survivors, and the victims or survivors seeking services who were not served. Now this section can be a little bit tricky. Um, you need to report it by the victimization type. And I think the, the problem that we usually see is just the distinction. Usually it's a problem with partially served and whether they fit into that box or if they should be served or not served. Remember when you're completing this section to consider the use of your stop VAWA funding. Don't report any data for victims who are served, partially served, or not served based on any other funding stream. On question number 26, you'll enter the number of secondary victims served by victimization type. And then, <laughs> excuse me, if you put in any figures for um, victims not served or partially served, then you would check these boxes as appropriate. Avoid using the other box. That usually will come back to us from Muskie. Um, they don't like other. They'll try to squeeze it into one of these other categories. So if you have questions or want to discuss um, a specific case, then feel free to call me. For number 28, you're going to enter demographic data for each of the victims who are served and or partially served. So don't include the not served, only served and partially served. And the total number of victims in, for each of these identity categories should be equal to or greater than this total figure up here for served and partially served. Otherwise, it will give you a data validation error. On section number 29, you're going to input the number of um, victim-survivor relationships by each victimization type. And again, this total should be validated with the data you entered above for um, victim served or partially served in the section above. Next, for section number 30A, you should report the number of primary victims only. So this is not partially or secondary or not served at all, although obviously you wouldn't be entering services if they're not served. Um, so only for primary victims who receive stop program funded services. And unlike the VSSR, where we ask you to enter the discrete units or number of times a service was provided to a victim, you need to count each victim or survivor only once for each type of service that the victim received during the grant year, not the number of times the service was provided to the victim. Please note that they do validate this section as well, so the total for each type of service should not be higher than the total entered in the section above. Does anybody have any questions about this section? Okay, again, avoid using other. 
And another typical problem I see is um, people putting civil legal assistance in. Unless the service is provided by an attorney, paralegal, or somebody with a um, special certification like VIA for um, immigrant assistance, then you should be entering um, that type of service under civil legal advocacy or possibly criminal justice advocacy. It depends on what you're trying to enter here. Okay, I'm still pausing for questions. All right, looks like y'all are clear so far. Under Section 30B, this is where you report your shelter services. So you're going to report the number of victim survivors, the number of family members, and the number of bed nights for both emergency shelter and transitional housing. And please remember, once again, keep it specific to the use of your stop funds only. For number 30C, hotline calls, you're going to report the number of hotline calls that were received from primary victims and the total number of hotline calls received on phone lines paid for with STOP funds or answered by STOP program funded staff during that grant year. Please note that primary victims whose calls are reported here should not be reported as victims served in question 25 unless they also received at least one of the services listed in question 30A or 30B. And victims who receive services like crisis intervention, crisis intervention or advocacy, you wouldn't count those under hotline calls. You should report them in um, section 30A above. Does anybody have any questions about this? Okay. Under um, 30D, you're going to report any victim witness notification or outreach to victims. And then under number 31, you're going to report the total number of temporary or final protection orders that were requested or granted by type of victimization. Now it may be that you just you don't know this because you refer out for assistance or advocacy with um, protective orders. So in that case, any assistance you provide to direct them to this or to help them fill it out, make sure that you capture it in um, civil legal advocacy. Or criminal justice advocacy. But um, you just simply won't know, so you won't have any data to fill out if that applies to the, the use of your stop ballot fund. Number 32, you'll have an optional space to enter any additional information about the effectiveness of your stop ballot fund and victim services provided. Does anybody have any questions? Has anybody started to fill this out and got tripped up by how to enter your data correctly? Okay, I'll just assume y'all are experts then. All right, next we're going to skip the criminal justice system section because unless you also have a discretionary training, um, law enforcement project, then this does not apply to you. None of this. We're skipping through all of the criminal justice section and going straight to section F, narrative. So you have two required questions, 1561, and then you have two optional questions, 62 and 63. Some folks really like to go ahead and complete this in a Word document or some other word processor and then copy and paste because the PDF form can be a little bit touchy and it doesn't show paragraphs easily and that kind of thing. So in question number 60, this is the first required narrative question. 
you're going to write a couple of paragraphs, usually does it, but you can write more, um, as to what you see as the most significant areas of remaining need with regard to improving services to victims of the ballot eligible crimes, increasing safety, and enhancing community response. So you actually have two full pages in which you can do that if you so choose. And then for question 61, you're going to enter some uh, narrative information on what stop funding has allowed you to do that you could not do prior to receiving this funding. And if you don't know because you've had it ever since you've been there, you can either check with a colleague or just enter what you think would happen if you didn't receive your stop grant anymore. And you have two pages to do that as well. And then under number 62, this is the first um, optional question. You can provide any additional information you'd like them to know. And then 63, any additional information they might want to know about the data submitted. And then you're done. And you will next submit it to CJCC, and I'll show you how on the next slide. So first I'll go ahead and pause just in case anybody has any questions while we're on the form. Okay, looks like we don't have any questions, so we'll go back to the PowerPoint. So everybody should see the PowerPoint on your screen now. So now that we've been through it, here are some of the key points to remember. You should only report data on the use of your ballot funds. If you have a question about what each of the questions actually mean, your first good step is to click on the blue question mark boxes to get to get help. You can also refer to the instructions for help as the blue question mark boxes don't answer your question. If you need technical assistance with the PDF form, contact Muskie. And if you have questions after reviewing the instructions or calling Muskie, please contact me. Lastly, when you're done with the form, you're going to submit it to CJCC via Adobe by February 15th. And I'll click on this link to show you the Adobe form. So here we are. It's a very simple form. You just enter your agency or org name, your subgrant number, if applicable, your additional subgrant numbers. You attach the file and then put your contact information in and hit submit. And you're done. Some of the common errors that we see are failure to prorate data based on the use of ballot funds, data validation errors, such as um, inputting figures that aren't equal to or greater than the total number of victims served, and selecting incorrect purpose areas. Don't go crazy with the purpose areas. I know your agencies do a lot, and they probably fulfill a lot of the purpose areas, but you have to keep it specific to the use of your ballot funds only. All right, so this is um, not really a final, but somewhat a final opportunity for Q&A before we go over some of the online resources. We'll go ahead and pull those up while I'm waiting for you all to enter any if you have them. Okay, looks like there are no questions so far. 
So um, let me just make sure y'all can see my screen. Um, so what I have pulled up here is the VAWA MEI reporting page. And the form and instructions link were both emailed to you. Um, should have been emailed a couple of times, or at least to your project director, sorry. But they are here for your viewing pleasure all year round. And this is where you can download the form and view the instructions. So please remember, um, I really do get this question, you have to download the form. You can't complete it in the web browser. And you can you can try, but <laughs> it won't let you. You're going to have problems. So just make sure you download it. And um, I think one of the other common issues we run to regarding um, technology is just make sure that you have the, the most up-to-date version of Adobe. Because if you have an older version, then it may not read the form. Okay, so that's the form itself. And these are the uh, usually more detailed instructions of what you can find on the little blue question mark boxes. But um, go ahead and check both of those before you call me. Okay, and then you can find uh, some of this information at CJCC's website by going to Grant and Grant Program, and then clicking the little box by VAWA and scrolling down to Reporting. So we'll click on the reporting link and scroll almost down, a little over halfway, and then we have information here on annual reports. So here we have a link to Muskie's page, which is where we just were. We have the due date, February 15th of the year after your grant is closed. So in other words, February 15th every year. And then you can see I already have the VAWA CJSI webinar posted. Um, as I stated at the beginning, I'll try to make sure that we have this webinar and PowerPoint posted by Friday, the close of business, by 5 p.m., no later. Okay, so those are the helpful resources that we have online. Looks like uh, nobody's had any questions so far. So we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, just want to conclude by reminding you all to look at the instructions and to contact us for help. We are here for you. Here is Muskie's complete contact information as well as mine, and this is my direct line if you need to call. Also want to remind you to create reminders for your deadlines. If you fail to meet reporting deadlines, it can delay your reimbursement, and per your special conditions, you might be subject to reduction in your federal award amount. But we try to provide you all the training and technical assistance to ensure that that doesn't happen. And then lastly, I just wanted to say thank you all very much for your time today and for the work that you do to serve victims across the state. We greatly appreciate it. So I'm going to conclude the webinar now. Um, hope you all have a great day. And remember to contact me if you have any questions. Thank you.